ASAP Fundamentals, I want to expose you broadly to the capabilities of ASAP because it's a very broad program, but also very deep. Ways that we get geometry into a system uh, include Import from CAD is a very important in, uh, input method. Uh, we typically use IGES or STEP input. CATIA is also possible with a separate add-in. But IGES and STEP, in general, work well, are very flexible. They're, they're imperfect, but, but very good, particularly for getting in items that have macroscopic surface properties. Many CAD formats do not accurately represent optical surfaces, at least not imaging optical surfaces. So we have some other approaches for that usually, or we may, we may use a hybrid approach where we input uh, from CAD, but then import from lens design or create in ASAP native just the imaging optical surfaces. If, if we have sub-wavelength control necessary, uh, then the latter approach, the hybrid approach may be important. The optical properties that we can apply include the material specification, and it can be a simple isotropic optical material, for example. That's the simplest possible thing. But it can also be gradient index materials, single axis or uniaxial birefringent crystal materials. We can include absorption, index dispersion, and volume scatter. There are other things we can do as well, but these cover the most common things. Coatings, we can specify in terms of their reflectance, transmittance, absorption. We can also describe them in terms of layer thicknesses or material types. We can apply diffraction as a coating, so a diffraction grading can be thought of as, in a sense, a special kind of coating. And we can do wavelength, angle of incidence, or polarization dependence in these things. And finally, with scatter, for now I'm thinking mostly about surface scatter, we can import and fit measured data to some common scatter functions. And we can user-define scatter functions. We can also use tabular data for scatter. I would consider these two approaches to be better uh, when possible, but tabular data is also possible. It tends to slow things down a little bit compared to these two methods. In establishing a light source in the system, we can have incandescent sources, uh, light emitting diodes, lasers, HID, many other kinds of point sources. The input methods include a built-in library and some fundamental primitive light source options in ASAP, and importing measured data and then fitting a source description to those data. To propagate, we have various algorithms. We're going to spend 95% of our effort on geometrical optical ray tracing because that solves the vast majority of problems that people need to do. And it is great for illumination problems, first order optics, a number of things. Gaussian beam propagation and decomposition is actually an approach for doing wave optics or for getting coherent and diffractive results using the same ray trace engine, but with it carrying more information with each ray. And finally, beam propagation method. It's actually a finite difference uh, beam propagation method that is used for things like waveguides. And we don't do a lot of that work. It's not a specialty. But it's useful if you have a waveguide, for instance, an optical fiber coupled laser source that you want to use as a source in a macroscopic optical system. Say you put in a laser collimator that is a macroscopic optical lens assembly. Then we could feed, by beam propagation method, the laser source uh, out of the fiber end and then change to propagating it by one of these other methods uh, to do the macroscopic part. The optical phenomena that we can engage in light propagation include refraction, reflection, transmission, absorption, birefringence, and total internal reflection. Refraction is probably the most important. 
except for people who work in reflective systems where reflection is very important. Transmission through bulk media is kind of what I'm thinking about there, but it could also be the transmission coefficient at a surface. All that is true. ASAP does those things. Surface scatter and volume scatter, diffraction and interference phenomena, polarization and fluorescence. And there are actually others, but this covers 99% of systems. And you, you, you care about it when you work on the other 1%. In terms of the kinds of performance evaluation we can do, there's general analysis kinds of capabilities that we do very often. And just looking at efficiency, how much of the light from the source arrives at a detector or target. The irradiance, basically how, how concentrated is it into the area where it is incident. Radiant intensity, which is the angular concentration, how narrow is the beam, or how large is the cone, and how much energy is concentrated in that cone per unit solid angle instead of per unit area, radiance or luminance. And another analysis that we are doing more and more is color science or color analysis. We may look at stray light, the paths that the light takes that are undesired, for example. There may be scattered or ghost images on a detector that cause the uh, Image, to be, image contrast to be reduced. Stray light is the reason this product was created in the first place, so it's very strong in that area. We may look at image quality, things like modulation transfer function, for example. Diffraction and interference, actually looking at fringe patterns and point spread functions and things like that. Polarization evaluation, where we actually want to see what polarization state exist in, or states exist in, in the light. Color science, as I mentioned before. Here, I'm thinking about sort of fundamental things, uh, maybe confined to chromaticity. Here, I'm thinking about mapping to other color spaces, like the visual color space or the CIE LUV space, for example. And we can also create our own evaluations based on anything that we can think of that we can describe mathematically using ASAP scripting. And that's a very broad capability. And I spend, if I'm lucky, about 80% of my time inventing new analysis types that have not been done before. And in fact, I was very happy last week because I, I achieved a new kind of analysis that hasn't been done before. And I look forward to actually writing it up and sharing it with the customer who motivated it.